How do you pack for a three month trip? I'm going to Chile tomorrow for a week. And then after that on Saturday, I'm going to Spain for three months. And my room is a mess. To be completely honest, I don't even know what I'm gonna put on the carry-on. Like, I usually don't pack this much. What, what, what do I do? Okay, what do I even do? Everything's occupying a lot of space today. I don't even know where to start. What do I need to pack first? I suppose I need to pack shoes. Apparently I'm not taking any winter exercise clothes. I wanna take some sweaters, that's for sure. I still don't know how, what I need to pack. Honestly, like how, what are you supposed to pack for a three month trip? I have no idea. It turns out that moving to another country, if only for three months, is more hectic and takes more time to adapt to than I had thought about. Which is completely hilarious if you think about the fact that I have already moved countries permanently, not just for three months, once before in my life. The change in schedules makes it even more difficult, to be honest. When I moved to Argentina, I didn't have to deal with jet lag at all because the time difference was only about an hour. That means that for the first two weeks of being in Madrid, I was actually not doing much recording of anything. Especially because it's not like I had asked for any vacation days or anything like that when I first got there. I was just too busy trying to accommodate my sleeping schedule to the Spanish schedule, as well as working from 4 p.m. in the afternoon until 12 p.m. at night, because I was working U.S. hours while in Europe. Let me tell you that working U.S. hours while in Europe is not something that I think I could have maintained for much more than I did. In any case, I also had to find a way to get a phone number while I was there because Argentine roaming was just not a viable option because of how expensive and potentially unreliable it was going to be. And that meant that I would get lost more than just a couple of times while getting around. Yay! Lucky for me, uh, it was relatively easy to get back to the apartment where I was renting a bedroom by, just looking at the subway line map. Getting around without Google Maps is very difficult for internet babies like myself. One of the first things that I had the presence of mind to record in my first couple of weeks in Madrid was going to the Balloon Museum with Claudia, who I had just met a few weeks before when I arrived in Madrid, by the way. We actually know each other because of a friend we have in common, so it was really nice being able to finally meet her in person. The Balloon Museum was a super cool experience, but it was definitely overstimulating and going with her, who was obviously enjoying it on another level, made it that much better. I also got to celebrate her birthday with her the first week that I was in Madrid, and I am very happy about that. But in any case, as I've already mentioned before, the first few weeks in Madrid were a haze, and before I knew it, it was already time to go to Germany. I'm in Munich, Germany, for the first time ever, and I have no idea how to speak a single word of German besides just saying I love you, and that's not very useful when I'm just trying to, like, understand what metro station and what train to take like i'm taking i'm supposed to like connect line u2 with u5 and it's just the same thing and like i don't have to walk anywhere to connect i just have to get out of the train and then get in on the other one I'm not sure what i'm doing but i guess that we will see i have 40 percent battery worst case scenario wherever i end up i'll just take an uber back to the hotel so sometimes life can give you very unexpected curveballs, but just because they are curveballs, it doesn't mean that they are bad. When I first started planning the trip to Europe and contemplating the idea of going to other countries besides just visiting my friends in Spain, I really had no intention of going to Germany because it seemed like it was really expensive to travel there. But once in Spain, the opportunity to go to Germany kind of just presented itself. And if there is one thing that I know, is that there are already many things in life that I will just not have the chance to do. Things that I will have to say no to in order to direct my attention and focus and energy to my actual priorities in life. So now that I found myself in the situation where my focus, energy and priorities was exactly aligned with wanting to visit Germany, I just couldn't say no. And I am so very happy that I didn't. So 
I'm in Munich right now because I had the opportunity to spontaneously come to Munich. And um, I decided to go to Berlin. I spent a lot of money to go to Berlin uh, in the plane tickets, but the plane ticket to go back to Madrid was not that expensive. But I still spent a lot of money in the Airbnb to stay in Berlin for like four days. But I have always wanted to be in Germany and I've always wanted to visit Berlin. And I figured I'm in Germany, when's the next time that I'm gonna have the opportunity to go to Berlin? I don't know, because I literally spend the money to come to Europe just so that I could visit several countries. And when am I gonna save as much money as I saved for this trip with the sole purpose of traveling around Europe? I don't know, next time I will not have the will to spend the money. So, I'm going to Berlin tomorrow, and um, I really need to get a haircut. I really do not like myself with long hair. So, I'm looking for a hair salon that I can go to and just be like, you know what? Can I get a haircut? And see what happens. See if the language barrier doesn't f me over. Then, I'm also in the process of writing an itinerary for the three days that I'm gonna have free, because I'm also gonna be there on Tuesday, but I'm gonna have to work a little bit more than on Monday. I have to apologize, I haven't recorded a lot of things. Traveling and vlogging and recording is especially difficult for me. I don't know what made me believe that if I sucked at just recording my regular day-to-day -day life, I was going to be any better at recording my traveling life, which is a lot more complicated than the regular day-to-day -day life. But I will try my best to record more of Berlin. I haven't done much in Munich. I've just been at a conference that uh, was going. I did a lot of nocturnal tourism, but I did not record. I found out that in Munich, there is this sort of artificially, hmm, I don't know how you say it, but it's a river, it's a sort of river, but I, it's been manipulated so that there are waves. I was taking a, like a bike tour, I was not taking the bike tour, I was doing like a bike tour with a friend who came to Munich that I met, I actually met her in Buenos Aires, but I came to Munich and she came to Munich and we saw each other in Munich. We came across this river that has artificially made waves and people were just there at one in the morning, chilling, surfing in the river. That was pretty interesting. There's a lot of things that I can say about Munich. There's a lot of things that I can say about the city and about everything that I've done, which is not much. The subway is really, really complicated. People smoke everywhere, but nobody throws out like the the cigarette butts out. Like you don't see cigarette butts anywhere. They're all all of the streets are clean and like I don't know. I I, I will make a dedicated video for my first impressions of Berlin and Munich. But I've always wanted to come to Germany because my last name is supposedly German and I've asked people how they would pronounce my last name. I've asked German people how they would pronounce my last name. Nobody knows, but just because of that, I've always been like, oh, I really want to go to Germany. I really want to go to Germany. And I am finally in Germany. I'm going to travel to Berlin for a few days. Hopefully I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to do an itinerary right now of all of the interesting things that I can do when I'm in Berlin. And probably I'm going to get the haircut and see what happens. And then I'm going back to Madrid so that I can go out to Pamplona and then continue this trip. I was a little bit down, honestly, because the plans that I had for the trip and what I wanted to do for the trip was not happening in the way that I initially thought it would happen. And I was also a little bit upset about the fact that I may have to spend more money. And I decided to not care about that, <laughs> essentially. Uh, I saved a lot of money. I spent almost an entire year saving exclusively to have enough money for this trip to do the nice things that I wanted to do and at some point my priorities shifted and I was like well if I don't have to spend the money then I won't spend the money because I've never had this much money saved but then when am I gonna come back to Europe I don't know when I'm gonna come back to Europe probably hopefully in like one or two years because I am liking it and I have people here that I can visit but it's very expensive so I really don't know when I'm going to have the chance it's also exhausting to travel and work in the way that I am doing the schedule is a mess so I honestly need to give myself the time to settle after these trip. I just need to stay put after these trips so that I, I arrange my life a little bit more. I don't like being like, I don't know, 
unsettled. So I was talking to some friends about this and I was telling them how I felt a little bit sad because the plans I had were not going as expected and they were like, you know what? If the things that you wanted to do with your friends are not working out, if the plans that you had with your friends are not working out, just travel by yourself, make it your own eat, pray, love type of thing. And as delusional as that may sound, because we don't we don't live in a movie, but your life is your own movie, of course. I decided to just I'm gonna go with it. I'm going to do the best of the trip and I'm going to enjoy myself and I do enjoy my own company. I have to also try to enjoy my own company in other activities and this is something that I've tried to do back in Buenos Aires as well. Like I, I was trying to do more activities by myself without being ashamed or without feeling shy about it. I was going climbing as long like as hard as it may be to believe going climbing by myself is an activity that I was shy about because I felt a little bit awkward at the gym because other people climb together. They go in groups and they give each other tips and whatnot. So climbing and just putting on my headphones and listening to music and being by myself at the gym was one of the things that I was doing to get myself to feel more comfortable doing things alone. And now I'm just going to have to uh, like hit the gas and make myself feel more comfortable with being in completely different cities and completely new countries all by myself. So. I I'll try to record it and share it with you guys, see how it goes, and I'll give you my thoughts, my more organized thoughts on them later. If I don't vlog my days at the new cities, I will just try to like record a lot of the things that I do and just kind of narrate them, narrate my days through the things that I do and like just share that with you. But be patient. I'm trying to learn how to vlog, do my best. I didn't bring my, oh, that's something else. I didn't bring my, my camera with me because I didn't really think that I was gonna do much to record uh, in Munich. But my phone is a great camera. My phone records 4K. So I figured if I need to record anything, I'll just use my phone. And that's essentially what I'm gonna do. I do have the GoPro. So if I do go on another bike tour around Berlin, probably not Munich, but if I do go on another bike tour in any of the cities or in both of the cities, I'll try to record it with the GoPro because it'll be really nice. And I will see you in the next video that Record whatever that is. Making the most of these opportunities, however, doesn't mean that I was an expert at planning how to make the most of them. And I found myself in situations where I just had to try and figure things out. For example, I had only packed enough clothes for about a week in Munich, and then I very spontaneously decided to go to Berlin. But very much to my dismay, I was running out of clean clothes and also clean underwear. So I had to try and figure out where I could do some laundry on the very last day before it was time for me to fly to Berlin. This is just unmanned. I was talking to myself more than anybody else. Everything in Berlin is super freaking far away. And it's like 12 kilometers away is already outside of the city when you are in Buenos Aires. It was just not there. It was, there was a weird screen. It was like, yeah, it's 10. Like off just go somewhere else you should have done this before train what do you mean i gotta take a train to the gate what 